Okay, good morning. Good morning, Nisarga. Good morning, good yeah. morning Marion. And uh, thank you for being here today. I invited Nisarga for an interview. He is co-trainer of the Biodynamic Breathwork. And, um, and also he is um, doing a lot of body work in, and bringing that together with the breathwork. So I'd like to hear a little bit more from you as well about your journey to actually get where you are at now. So mm. how did that evolve for you? Thank you for inviting me for this interview. Mm. And um, I graduated from Technical University and I have been in a corporate world uh, for first uh, few years after finishing uh, my graduation. But I very uh, quickly realized that this is not my soul calling. This is not something that gives me joy and passion. So I have been doing that to you know, um, uh, meet ends together and um, have financial support, but I started discovering uh, the passion, which was massage and bodywork, and it was 99, so it's been 20 years ago where I uh, entered the uh, uh, path of uh, massage, bodywork, spirituality and breath work, and I start noticing that this is really what I love doing, this is where I have my passion and this is where it brings healing to my body and my soul, my mind. And slowly I find a transition where I could uh, find the courage to let go of corporate world and fully surrender and trust the universe that this journey will take me to the right direction. So it was a gradual few years of a transition time where I was still in corporation one leg and into spirituality, another leg, and just trying to really figure it out how I can um, be in the path that brings me fulfillment, joy, and, and passion, rather than you know being eight, ten hours behind the desk and doing things that were useless for, for my point of view in corporation. Okay. And you already say like I was in like one leg in the more corporate world and the other leg in the spiritual world. Was there any linkage between those? Could you communicate about one and the other in those different worlds? Or how has that been for you? It was, uh, I was trying to find a link and I was, uh, for some time I was thinking that I can merge these two words, but I couldn't find uh, the right way. So um, it was challenging because I was uh, really, when I was in corporate world, I was kind of like missing that depth, missing intimacy with people mm -hmm. and missing, um, you know, the presence and love, compassion. At times it was difficult in corporate world to be in this state of openness, trust. And, and, and then uh, on the time when I was fully involved in the spiritual practices over the weekends, on my day offs, I was going into that uh, other side of the spectrum, which was fully connection with people, with myself. And um, it was difficult to find a link and um, I didn't manage. Mm. Didn't manage. That's why I decided to let go of one and, and focus on things that were um, um, interested for me, mm. what I was passionate about. And didn't you manage because of just who you are or was it also because of the Polish context that you come from where once in a group um, a male said like if I express my emotion in this um, culture it's, it, I will be really rejected and I'm even scared that my wife may even reject me um, for just you know showing up who I am deeply inside and um, has that been also one of your struggles living in both worlds? Yeah, that's an interesting uh, subject about, uh, especially for men, expressing vulnerability and expressing emotions, feelings, expressing the truth, like what is the truth, the, the passion, because uh, we're living in a society where men should not show emotions. It's even saying men don't cry, you know, mm -hmm. because the crying is perceived very often uh, as a weakness. But in fact, it's the strength. So a lot of time I was, when I go back memories 20, 15 years back, 
I was at times completely disconnected from my, my emotions, my physicality. I was living kind of like a robot, you know, being totally not aware of the pain in my body, not aware of my emotional pain, of my wounding, of my traumas. And, and that created this emptiness inside of me that I was constantly looking for something or numbing myself with drugs or alcohol or, or parties to really cover this up, this, this huge need to really express. And, and I think it's, a, it's quite a big problem for men to perceive our vulnerability and, and crying and showing our emotions as a weakness. But in fact, uh, it's a huge strength for men to show up with, uh, with who we are deeply, with our woundings also, and show it to the world, show it to anybody and own this, that, okay, I, I have this pain inside of me and how I can express it in conscious way without mm -hmm. harming the other, without projecting it on the other, but fully staying present with it. Mm -hmm. And I find also in the Netherlands, when I look at breathwork, that a lot of men are attracted to breathwork as against to other spiritual practices where you see a lot of female. What is that attraction in breathwork to males? I, I think this can be linked to, the, link to this, uh, what we just said about um, mm -hmm. this connection from emotions, from vulnerability, because breathwork is really straight path to connect. Uh, you know, you, in, in a session, one session in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I see people in breath work going straight into their feelings, expressing um, physically, emotionally, and that is very attractive for, for men, for women, for anybody, because sometimes we spend months or weeks in the psychotherapy talking about subjects, and that's beautiful to bring our mind and bring understanding of our wounding, but with breath work, the main, uh, the, the core of the work is to trust the body, to trust the energy and work with the core issues. And breath work magically brings all this up into the surface so we can feel it. So there is no, we kind of trespass our mind because mind is very often on guard. Mind is on guard of our ego protection. So we holding back because we are afraid to really let all these emotions out, show this vulnerability and breath work trespass the mind, the protection of the ego and allow these uh, um, emotions and all this mm -hmm. um, vulnerability to surface up mm -hmm. and people can feel it in a conscious way, feel, express and that's very beautiful. We just now in the breath work training in Poland and two days ago we had this beautiful session for a man who uh, shared that he never had uh, this experience in his life where he can fully express himself, fully express his uh, emotions. He is probably in his 50s, so imagine for 50 years, for the first time with breath work, he started discovering his full capacity to feel mm -hmm. and to express. And that's very attractive because we're coming back to ourselves, to our essence, and we feel, and it's wonderful to feel. Mm -hmm. And I also think like the more we can feel our own emotions, the bigger the container of what we can hold in our environment as well. So the easier it will be to, for others as well. So there's a container for others to express their feelings definitely, as well. Definitely, definitely. If we yeah. open up to our feelings, people around us will feel this, uh, this wide energetical mm -hmm. field and they will trust. They will yeah. trust and they will, they will be able to also open up in our mm -hmm. presence. And, and show their vulnerability, show their feelings. So definitely it's, um, that container is growing all mm -hmm. the time. And as much as we meditate, as much as we breathe, as much as we do inner work, spiritual work, we grow into uh, our practices mm -hmm. and uh, we expand this energy of love and compassion and presence. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, where I can relate as well, I also come from the corporate world and, um, and I'm still partly in it because I'm still teaching at several business schools where I also bring in a lot of body work in my teaching to allow people to, to learn in different ways. And um, 
I, and, and you already said, like, we become like a kind of a robot where we mm -hmm. just follow like, the procedures and what we have to do in corporates and get, go for targets. And we're currently living in a society where there are more um, mentally sick people than physically sick, which I think is really a concern. Um, especially also if you look globally, a lot of depressed people, a lot of burnout, mm -hmm. and it's, it's growing very rapidly of people getting burned out. What could be the role of, of breath work and body work in, in corporates to deal with these kind of issues, like stress, mm -hmm. depression, burned out? Yes, that's a great question. Um, very often the stress, depression, suppressed emotions are stored in our body. One of the major functions of the, of the soft tissue or fascia is to store our feelings, our emotions. So in corporate world, I observe very often people who are going for a continuous uh, experiences in stressful situation, uh, they accumulate all this material in the body. And that stress, that tension, that emotions create belts of tension and people start over the period of longer period of time they start suffering from pains headaches uh, lower back pains all sort of dysfunctions in the body and that uh, immobilize their their lifestyle because sometimes i heard from people that over sudden from being very active uh, being in corporate work they they uh, face a lot of pain in their body mm -hmm. and they cannot anymore run, they cannot anymore do activities that they normally used to do. Mm -hmm. And that creates a lot of fear because, because that's naturally created fear. How I can function in this world, how I can still continue working, etc., etc. So breath work and body work deal very well with, uh, it's kind of like a hygiene for the body, for the emotions. Mm -hmm. So it helps in ongoingly to uh, keep the body in a healthy state release those tensions from the body, this armoring from, from our physical realm through breath work and through body work, melting it down so we can still go back to flexibility in the body and that also impacts our mind because mind and the body are related. If we are good in our body, we will feel good in our mind, we will have more positive thoughts, happier thoughts. If our body is contracted, in pain, in stress, it's very difficult to come up in a state of happiness and joy mm -hmm. because all we think is how I can come out of pain. All we think is our fear, maybe anger. And, uh, and so these two are linked together. So by body work, by breath work, we opening up the physical layers, we impacted our mind and we create more fulfilled life and happier state for people. Okay, thank you. And maybe quite a big step for people to jump into breath work. Um, and I know you, kind of, you recently created an online training. So how could that maybe be a step for people to um, move more towards um, body work and, um, uh, and breath work? Yeah, thank you for mentioning this. Uh, uh, I just created an uh, online course, it's called Breath Awakening and it's an um, uh, accumulation of 20 years of my experience in breath work and I created a sequence of 14 different breathing techniques that you can practice at home for 20 minutes and each day you're receiving different practices where you can uh, start engaging slowly with the magic of breath and um, and it's a great uh, course to start the journey because you are doing it in a safe environment at your home with the resource. You can do it with your own pace and with your own privacy. And from that, you can uh, start a deeper journey in uh, our biodynamic breath course trainings or any other modality that you feel drawn to. So I invite you to check it out. <laughs> Breathawakening.com yeah. Okay, great. Um, you created the Integral Body Institute, or you're a co-founder of that. Yes. And um, within that institute, a lot of things are, are happening, a lot of trainings are happening. What is your vision towards the future that you want to manifest in the world with this institute? 
The Integral Body Institute uh, was founded by myself and Gitten Tonkov uh, in 2012 and uh, when we were creating that platform we had no idea that it's going to be so successful and people will be drawn to, um, uh, to methods that we're bringing and the main theme of the institute is body related therapies. So we have amazing teachers from all over the world coming here to Poland and teaching uh, breath work, body work, qigong, dissectomy course and those are modalities that works very um, well with, um, with body related um, uh, therapies and at the moment my vision is to uh, bring it to the world and uh, perhaps uh, creating more uh, of the institutes all over the world because I hear from many people they would love to join here in Poland but they cannot come here uh, so maybe create a little uh, centers around the world so people could really more and more people could benefit this amazing and transformative work that, that we are offering and um, come back to their body bring more happiness and joy in their lives So what kind of world do you envision if there's more people back in their bodies and enjoying their lives. There's more intimacy, there's more connection and mm. there's more sharing and that's for me the most valuable quality where people can come back to their heart and share with each other and be intimate without fear uh, and be open and trust. Right. right. Thank you, thank you Nisaga and um, Thank you for sharing your vision on the Institute, on the work that we do here. And I mean, it's been very beneficial to me. And, um, and I find a lot of people in the trainings and the groups as well that really mm. benefit from all the work. So thank you for this interview and your time. Thank you, Marianne. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>